Hey guys, welcome back to MassiveSynth.com tutorials. This is part two of the electronica or experimental kind of sounds feature we've been doing this month on Native Instruments Massive. And in this tutorial, I was going to show you how to make that sound I had playing there, which is kind of like a drum sequence and it's got like a chord on there as well. So We're kind of using Massive a bit like a drum machine, I guess, to some extent for this sort of sound, and using various oscillators and noise generators to create that kind of drum pattern. And what I've set up here is almost like a mixer for for all these different kind of sounds we've got going on. So let's start off, create a new sound in Massive, and turn on, or just actually just can't turn on oscillator two for now. We'll focus on this to start with and we're going to use oscillator 2 to generate our kick drum so convert this to a sine square and pull the wavetable position not all the way to the left I'm going to have a little bit of square wave in there it's just going to help with the sort of character of the sound a little bit and um, take it down minus 3 octaves so just got quite a low sign now and pull the amp down to about just before, so it's pointing just before the A. Intensity stays on full, and let's use a performer to modulate this oscillator. So in the second LFO slot here, let's convert this into a performer. Click and drag the crosshair of this performer to the pitch on oscillator two, and let's go plus thirty-six. <laughs> Not quiet there, but so we've got that sort of sound now. So let's set up this performer. So we'll sync it, take the ratio to 1 over 24. So we're kind of getting that triplet kind of feel on the beat. Push the X fade sequence to the top for now, and let's just pull it down to 12 steps, which will keep it nice and in sync with the ratio we've set there. And Let's have a pattern like this. So, and we can further enhance that kind of kick drum feel by using this performer to also modulate the amp of this oscillator. So now we can pull that master down a bit now. And just having a bit of that square wave helps the kind of tone of this sort of kick drum really. And what we can do, if you notice at the beginning of this tutorial, I sort of give a variation on the beat. So what we can do is program a variation on this kick drum pattern in the bottom half of this performer. So select this sawtooth curve and drag this across the bottom section of this X fade sequence and set this up slightly differently so and by adjusting the levels of some of these curves it's almost like adjusting the velocity really the volume of this kick drum so now if we set up macro 5 can be the pattern shifter so click and drag click and drag the crosshair of this macro 5 to the X fade sequence slot, click and drag down. So now, and then we'll call this pattern. So now we've got. Two sort of. Two kick drum patterns programmed in there. Clear that first macro slot. So. Now we can set up the, probably best to set up the clap sound next. So move to this noise generator here. Uh, I'm going to keep it on white noise for this sound, but I'm going to pull the color to about halfway. So, the color's a bit like a low pass filter, I guess. So, pull the color to about halfway and pull the amp down to zero. So, we're going to use a performer for this noise sound. And so, let's go to the third. LFO slot here, convert this into a performer, click and drag the crosshair of this performer to modulate the amp of the noise, click and drag up to full modulation amount, so and 
and let's set up this performer kind of similar to how we set up the kick so we sync it ratio to 1 over 24 12 steps and let's just keep the volume of step 7 on full and 11 take the volume down to about half and 12 same again but let's change the curve for this one so it's a bit of a and it's going to be a bit more of a shorter snare or clap sort of sound so so we've got our clap in there and let's program a variation on that clap sound in the bottom half of this x fade sequence low curve and it's going to use this top right curve here so just it's the easiest way to do it, just click and drag across and then let's just pull them all down apart from uh, step 5 and then step 9 and pull this, yeah so we've got that nice variation again so use this macro over here to just control that variation so now We've got that nice little variation of two kind of beat sort of sequences going on. So next up we can set the hi-hats. So on this oscillator one slot, turn it on and we're actually going to have the FX chord section, going to have melancholia for this. I can hear that. And we're just going to edit this a little bit so pull the wavetable position to the left and take the pitch up by three octaves. get a bit more of a kind of hi hat -y sort of character on the sound there. Keep the intensity on full and pull down to zero and I'm going to set up the first LFO here, set up this to control the hi-hats so it's going to be a performer again uh, and this time sync it but take the ratio to 1 over 12 so this just means it's going to be looping over this section at twice the speed of the kicks and the claps so we can get a bit of a quicker sort of hi-hat sequence in there so again 12 steps pull the S, push the x-phase sequence to the top for now and let's set this top section up like this keep it looping over whilst we're setting this up actually yeah click and drag the crosshair of this performer to modulate the amp so we're going to get that hi-hat in there And again, let's set up a variation in the bottom half of this sequence. And let's use a separate macro, and this can control the, the, the kind of pattern of the hi hat. So, hi hat pattern. And then click and drag down. So now we've got. And if you've got a decent MIDI controller, you could actually assign some of these macros, you know. Um, so you can control it using the controller and just record some of that, those variations in which would be pretty cool so let's help the, the character of this hi-hat a little bit let's use a, mod let's use a modulation oscillator 
and we're going to set it up with some phase modulation so click on the phase mode and check the oscillator 1 box there so it's kind of phase modulation on oscillator 1 so getting quite a nice sort of tone on the sound put the pitch up to about plus 60 and the phase modulation amount to full so now we've got a bit more of a kind of hi hatty sort of sound on this oscillator 1 sort of drum machine kind of hi-hat so now we can with these three kind of drum sounds set up we can set up the 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 kind of macros to behave like a bit like a mixer for these sounds so click and drag the crosshair this first macro to second amp slot on oscillator 2 check the sidechain feature and hit the dash underneath the first modulation slot so the arrow is pointing upwards so now rename this kick this is like a volume control for the kick now Do the same thing on the noise. Rename this clap. And again, same again on oscillator one for the hi hats. So we've just got these macros set up basically, a bit like a mixer, but also with these pattern variations so we can just quickly just flip that sort of sequence on its head a little bit. So final uh, kind of sound to bring in really is oscillator 3 and the kind of chord on the sound. So set up oscillator 3 using the colour wavetable. Which is just uh, kind of like a stacked chord wavetable, really nice sort of character to it. So can pretty much keep everything the same there, keep the pitch at zero. Just pull the amp down to zero as well. And we're going to use the final LFO here. We're going to use this as a performer. I'm going to use this to modulate the amp of oscillator 3. And click and drag up on that modulation amount. So you've got about, say, two thirds of the way around there and this performer we can set this up a similar way so ratio 1 over 12 let's pull the steps down to 12 and we're only going to program one sequence in here so push that x phase sequence up to the top and have something like this Notice as well with this color wavetable, like you get a much of a solo this wavetable, get a much deeper sort of sound if they pull the wavetable position towards the kind of center. So I was going to modulate that really, so that was happening with the sound. So using this envelope here click and drag the crosshair of this envelope to the first modulation slot on this wavetable position, click and drag down push the back the attack of this envelope up, off uh, keep the decay at halfway, push the sustain up to full check the trigger zero reset so the envelope re-triggers with each new key press so now you get a kind of chord sound kind of gets deeper as the the longer the sound sustains and I thought it'd be quite cool to have a similar effect on the sort of tone of the the clap as well so this color over here click and drag this same envelope and modulate the color of the the clap here so push click and drag up as well so now the clap's going to get a bit brighter the longer the sound sustains so again is quite nice pretty cool sort of amount of movement that we've got kind of added in there so the final things really with this sound uh, just to finish it off really is some classic tube and just keep the dry wet and drive around halfway and it just pull the drive down a little bit actually. 
so it's just kind of beefing the sound up, making it sound quite nice, and uh, some reverb. But let's set this up real kind of dry reverb, pull the size down a little bit, push the density up to full, pull the color down a little bit. So, and you know, with reverb, if you're producing a track and you wanted reverb, you'd add a bit more, say, reverb to the clap, for example. So, what we could do with this. Performer, the third, the third performer in here is the clap. So what we could do is use this to modulate the dry wet mix of the reverb. So now push this up slightly. So now we're going to get a little bit more reverb on the claps. We could also use the same effect on the size. So it's got a bit more of a pronounced reverb effect on the claps uh, and it's keeping it pretty dry on like the kick drum and stuff. So final thing actually, this fourth macro here, use this as a volume control for the chord. So basically we've got a sequence playing now and we've just got you know a looping C3 sustained note. And we can control all these things here. Okay, so there you have it, a kind of drum and sort of synth sequence really in Native Instruments Massive. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Any questions then please get in touch and thanks for watching. Alright, cheers, bye.